Hey there, Dan Gastu here. Today's video is about disassembling the lower unit for our Johnson 30 horsepower and is proudly sponsored by MarineEngine.com. Before we do that though, I've got another viewer t-shirt photo. This one here is Anthony Cohn from Brisbane, so thanks Anthony. All right, we'll head over to the bench and I'll show you what I'm thinking. Because this lower unit's leaking, at a bare minimum, we need to get this bearing carrier out so we can replace the oil seal there. We also need to get the second oil seal out from the drive shaft. The seal puller I've got isn't great because it's designed to lever against an edge and the edge here is quite thin. So I don't really want to use that to get the deeper one. It wasn't too bad for the shallow one, but it's going to be even worse for the deeper one. I've ordered a different style of puller, so we'll see when that arrives and see how we go, but that's something else we're going to need to do. As you can see, this gearbox is pretty corroded. It's got quite a lot of barnacles and things on the bottom of it still as well. We'll start by popping this back on the lower unit stand, then I'll show you what we need to do to get this bearing carrier out. Hopefully you can see there's a bolt head inside the gear case there on the right, and then there's another one there on the left. We need to get both of those undone, and then we need to clean these thread holes enough to put a puller into them, and then pull the bearing carrier out. The only Imperial sockets I have are a 3 8 drive, and they actually don't fit through the gap in the bearing carrier. So I'm going to go to quarter inch drive sockets and use a metric one. I think they're 5 16 bolts, but I'm going to use an 8mm socket. So far so good, feels like it's coming undone. Just go get myself a little parts tray before I lose them. Now I've removed the two bolts that hold the bearing carrier in, I can use two other threaded holes to pull the whole bearing carrier out. To do that, I've bought some threaded rod. This is quarter inch, 20 threads per inch. And I'm just gonna cut up two short lengths, weld some nuts on the end, and we'll use this with our puller. Before we do that though, I've also got a tap like this that we can use to clean the threads out. And this one obviously is also a quarter inch, 20 threads per inch. Just gonna carefully get this started. Normally when you're using a tap to cut a thread, you'll sort of do a few turns one way, a bit of a turn back, but because I'm just cleaning this thread out, I'm just going to mostly be winding it in. It's getting a little bit stiffer now, so I might need to use the handle, but it's not too bad. All right, we'll wind it out now. So this is the result. You can see quite a bit of gunks collected in the channels of the tap. So this is some of the stuff that's come out. So you can see it would have been quite hard to put the threaded rod in without cleaning them first. A couple of videos ago, people suggested using a bolt or some threaded rod, tapering the end slightly, cutting some grooves in it and making a bit of a homemade tap. And that's a good way to go if you don't have one. I'm just too lazy. I'm quickly now going to put a little bit of oil on the tap and just run it through again. Now I've got the bulk of the stuff out and that should leave it pretty ready to go. So in case you're curious, that's the result of a second run through with a bit of oil on the tap. Definitely got a bit more gunk out. I need to cut the threaded rod about here based on the length of the puller and the prop shaft. So I'm going to wind a nut down to be just a little bit past there. So when I cut it, I can just pull the nut back off and clean the thread up a bit. I went through this in some detail on the video on the Evinrude 150, which unfortunately is a larger diameter threaded rod. So I'll make this one really quickly and we'll get on with it. I could now just wind this nut off the end to clean the thread up, but what I'm actually going to do is weld it on the end here to make it into a long bolt. So I'll just run it there until it's flush and I'll weld it on there. Then we've still got the factory end to go into the bearing carrier. I'm not going to use any filler rod or anything, I'm just going to tack the nut on the end now so I can wind the threads into the bearing carrier. Obviously this one's still a bit hot, this one's cooling down. It's melted the edge of the hexatonium out, but it's not going to stop it winding in. What I've got to do now is put a stack of washers below that head so it doesn't pull through on the puller. Kind of tempted to tack these together just to keep it more steady. I think I'll do that. There's nothing pretty about them, just sort of tack them in places so they stay together. It just means that I won't be wrestling with the washers all sliding around while I'm trying to get tension on the puller. All right, the finished product. Let's go see if it works. I'm just going to wind one of these in first. 
going in nicely to our cleaned up threads, which is good. Then I think we're going to have to wind the second one in with the puller in situ. I'm going to wind this a fair way in so I don't pull the thread out. If I only have a few threads in, it's likely just to pull out before the bearing carrier comes out. Alright, then we'll wind the puller to get a bit of tension. Last week I put a bit of spray on the bearing carrier and a bit of heat. I'm going to put a bit of heat on it again first before we try, then we'll put an impact gun on here and see if we can pull it out. here of course is to try and get that outer section to expand a little bit so the inner section can come out more easily. Alright, we'll get a bit of tension on it then I'll keep heating. It's out. I'll get this to the bench, let it all cool down, then we'll push on. The ultimate goal here is to completely restore this gearbox, so I'm going to be looking at doing oil seals and then the water pump. But what I'd also like to do is respray the lower unit. Because of that, what I'm going to do is take the whole prop shaft out as well so that the unit is free and I'll just get it sandblasted, can paint it, and then we can put it back together. While this is out, it's probably worth showing that where the threaded rod goes in, there are actually open threaded holes here, so the threaded rod can come out the back there. So you can't actually thread them too far. In the gearbox here, now we've just got a thrust washer we can pull out. The next thing we need to do, if we look on this side, as you can see here are the two holes for a snap ring. So I need to try and squeeze some pliers in and get that snap ring out. There we go. These things are under a lot of tension when they're in, so just be careful, put some safety glasses on or something, because if it springs off, it could go in your eye. Now the circlip's out, you can see the retainer plate behind it has flopped forward a bit, so it looks like that's gonna be pretty easy to pull out. So I'm just taking note, this tab at the bottom of it was facing straight down. What I might do is take this little keeper off so we can take this collar off and then we can just grip the shift rod itself and twist it because this collar here just spins on the shaft. Like the upper one, this keeper's just got a little split in it here so I'll separate it there and pop that off. Given there's no flat on it to get a tool, I'm kind of glad it's just winding out by hand easy enough. I guess if it was seized you could maybe get some vice grips or something onto it. Alright, there we go. I'm just going to pop the collar back on and put the keeper back on for now. The keeper's a sort of bit of a one-use thing, you're supposed to replace them every time, but I'll keep it all together for now, just so nothing gets lost. Next thing is to pull the shift yoke out that we unscrewed the shift rod from. Apparently you just need long nose pliers and pull it out, so let's give it a shot. Alright, came out easy enough. The only real trick to getting it out was that I had to push the shift linkage down a little bit. I just leave it inside with a screwdriver, push it down, just so I could get this top section to clear the casing. The bottom is a hook like that, so once it was down, I could pull it out, it sort of unhooked and came out. Next thing we need to do is undo this, which is the shift lever pivot pin. So we're going to take this out, and this will allow us to get the prop shaft out. This pin's pretty stuck, so I'm going to try an impact driver on it. Just starting to budge. So, gently remove the pivot pin and discard the O-ring. 
I've got a complete lower unit seal kit that we'll be putting in later on, so I presume things like this O-ring will be in this kit. All right, now theoretically we can pull the prop shaft out. Got stuck, so a little bit of force, but no big deal. And quite kindly, I'll show you. Two detent balls and a spring have fallen out here, which is great because the service manual says to go grab a magnet and start trying to fish them out, so they're nice and easy this time. Pop these in a little Ziploc bag. Then I'm able to fish out the dog clutch and the shift lever. Sitting at the back of the gearbox along here is the forward gear. And if I reach in, I can tilt the bottom of it under the pinion gear. And pull that out, no dramas. With that forward gear out, the pinion gear can drop down and then that can come out too. So while the forward gear was in, this was resting like this. So I pulled the forward gear out and under, which let this drop and then come out as well. Down in the back there, you'll see there's a taper roller bearing that's for the front end of the prop shaft. The bearing will fall out, but the race will be quite firmly in there. So I'll just get the bearing out for now. So there we go, just a standard taper roller bearer, nothing hugely special about it. Next thing I do is just take these two anodes off. Because the trim tab anode was spinning as I was undoing the nut, I'm just going to use a shifter to hold it still. Here on this one, there's too much corrosion around the bolt to get a socket on it, so I'll clean that out first. Okay, bolt from the port side out, and then we should be able to just lever this starboard anode out now. I want to get this sandblasted, for better or for worse, as an experiment. Obviously, I want to minimise any sort of collateral damage that may result in leaks or, you know, whatever. So. I'm going to seal it up as well as I can. So that's going to involve putting all my drain plugs, the pivot pin back in, all that kind of thing. So that as few openings to the inside of the case are there for sand to get in and do any sort of damage. This is the old bag from when I took the gear case apart. So I've got my drain plugs here. Being aluminium, they may soda blast it instead of sandblasting, whatever, I'm not too sure but I'll have a chat to the guy when I get there and I'll let you know what he says when I get back. So I dropped the gearbox off and uh, Matt I spoke to, who's our local sandblasting guy, said he's pretty confident he can get it looking pretty good. So we'll see how that turns out in a future video. I can't recall at the start of this video what I said it was gonna be about because I filmed it weeks and weeks and weeks ago, but ultimately, obviously, all we've done is dismantle it. So mm. we'll call it taking the prop shaft out. In future videos, we'll get that gear case back and we'll paint it up. Then we'll start rebuilding, put the gearbox back together, put the new seals in it, put the water pump in, reinstall it. But unfortunately, that's gonna have to wait for another day. All right, well, until then, take care and I'll catch you soon. See ya.